Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 7th, 2020 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week, an interesting F5 big IP vulnerability hit the news, and over the weekend, we have started to see active scanning to try to find vulnerable devices. The patch was released by F5 on June 30th. It's for CVE 2020-5902. And well, the reason you should pay attention is that this vulnerability has a perfect 10 for its CVSS score. Now, there are a couple of dependencies here for this vulnerability. First of all, the traffic management user interface TMUI has to be installed and has to be exposed. You don't have to expose it to the public. This is a management feature and should only be available via the management plane. But then we know there are plenty of people who don't configure these devices correctly and don't restrict access to the management interface. And apparently, yes, there are a few thousand of them still not patched out on the internet. Now, all of this uh, got a little bit more prominence on July 2nd. So that was uh, Thursday uh, last week when Positive Technologies, the company that discovered this vulnerability, did release a brief blog post uh, basically just announcing that they found this uh, remote code execution issue in uh, F5's big IP product. As far as the impact goes, this vulnerability is pretty much as important as the Citrix vulnerability over New Year's. However, with the Citrix vulnerability, it was a little bit more complex uh, to protect yourself. You couldn't just sort of isolate the management plane in that particular case, even though uh, that in some cases helped as well. Currently, there are plenty of tools out there to detect if a device is vulnerable. And uh, these are the tools that are currently being used as one of the indicators of an exploit attempt. The URL will contain two dots followed by a semicolon. So one of those directory traversal code injection type patterns that you would see as part of the attack. And if you would like to scan your own network, well, uh, there are is a plugin available for Nmap. And yes, exploit code is available, including a module for Metasploit that should allow you to exploit this vulnerability. So first thing you should do on Monday morning is check if you are using this F5 big IP product. Check if you're vulnerable apply the patch immediately. Again, assume that you may already have been exploited. So go over your logs to double check on that. And then certainly make sure that the management plane is not exposed to the public internet. Who knows when the next vulnerability in this feature will be found. But well, F5's big IP isn't the only sort of perimeter security kind of a device or product that has an issue. Also, Apache's Guacamole software. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it's essentially an open source RDP gateway. And just like commercial implementations of RDP, of course, open source versions sometimes suffer from vulnerabilities as well. And one of the great things about open source products, of course, is often that they're able to include other open source code, in this particular case, free RDP, which was found to be vulnerable back in January, which means that any version of Guacamole released before January is vulnerable to all the free RDP vulnerabilities that were discovered at this point. And of course, I can't help to point out that uh, when I talked about up and coming vulnerabilities at the RSA conference during our SANS panel uh, this year, these type of perimeter security and perimeter software vulnerabilities was exactly kind of what I was talking about. 
And I'm usually not talking much about individual breaches and such, uh, but there is one, well, not breach, but sort of incident that Barclays Bank got caught up in that I think has some good lessons here. Barclays apparently did serve some JavaScript from archive.org. Now, the problem with this is that, uh, first of all, archive.org, of course, is a non-profit. It's not a CDN to deliver a code. And as such, it also, well, isn't really supposed to be as reliable and secure as a commercial CDN. Now, in the past years, uh, developers have had the habit of including more and more code from third parties, which is probably why this sort of got missed. But if you do that, please become familiar with features like sub-resource integrity, and of course, use a commercial CDN, not a non-profit website like archive.org. And of course, if you're responsible monitoring security for a website, then you definitely need to enumerate where you are including code from. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.